Well, 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 well. What a year it's been. Not just for me, for you. Probably. You probably did some cool stuff. That's cool. Congratulations on all that, if you did. As for me, at the start of the year, I had such high hopes for 2022. I had such ambitions. I was gonna try out lots of awesome tech. I was gonna finally make it big on YouTube. I was gonna get a girlfriend. I was gonna move out of my mom's basement. I was going to get big muscles and learn to fly. I joined the Avengers. Only one of those things actually happened. And spoiler alert, it's not the girlfriend thing. And maybe you're in the same boat. Maybe you had big ambitions for 2022 that fell short. Maybe you wanted to, uh, I, I don't know, start a blog about artisan jams and jellies, or start a YouTube channel about artisan jams and jellies, or divorce your wife, or start a business selling artisan jams and jellies. And maybe you didn't reach all your goals, or any of your goals. But you know what? That's okay. You're totally not a failure. Because regardless of how many of our lofty ambitions we did or didn't fulfill, 2022 was still the best year we've had in a while. I think we could all agree on that. It beat the pants off 2020 and 2021, that's for sure. And I don't know about you, but I'm a lucky boy because I got to play with lots of awesome tech. And today, I'm feeling all sentimental and squishy, and I'm in the mood to reminisce. So, let's reminisce about my favorite tech that I got to play with in 2022, shall we? My first piece of favorite tech is the NVIDIA T600. Early in 2022, the world was still in the grips of the scalper pandemic, as the iceberg tech guy calls it. You couldn't buy good new GPUs, you couldn't buy good used GPUs, you couldn't even buy crappy GPUs. If, if you wanted a GPU and had a few hundred bucks to spend, you were probably looking at like a GT710. Yeah, it was that bad. And then this GPU came along, flying under the radar, the T600. It's a quadro card. Well, it, it's not called a quadro, but it's still a quadro. Come on now. So it didn't have that GTX or RTX branding, and it was kind of being ignored by the scalpers and even gamers. So I took it upon myself to see if it was any good and to show you how it compared to other low-end entry-level GPUs. At the time, for the price that they were selling it, it was the best value GPU that you could find. The video I made comparing it to the 1050 Ti and the 1650 is my most watched video. Over 50,000 views on that bad boy. Now, in late 2022, it doesn't make make nearly as much sense to buy a T600 over a, a 1650 or an RX 6400, but for a while there, this was the king of GPU value. And it's still a good GPU, even today. Early in 2022, a new piece of tech entered my life that changed my life forever. No, it's not my new heated slippers, although those are pretty freaking awesome, let me tell you. It was a retro handheld that has become not only my favorite piece of tech, not only my favorite retro handheld, but also my favorite thing in the whole world. Except for my mom, but she's not a thing, she's a, 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 a person. I'm talking about the BU Mini. This thing is special to me for a few reasons. First, I love the look of it. It's like a little mini Game Boy, right down to the beige plastic and all the little details that make it feel like a real um, updated but still retro nostalgic Game Boy. Second, it's got great performance for the price. It can play everything up to and including PS1. Third, it's got a great custom firmware called Onion OS that completes the experience. And finally, the most important reason that I love it so much, it's just the right size to be comfortable but still be pocket friendly. It's so pocket friendly, you guys, it's crazy. This thing lives in my cargo pocket. I literally have this thing with me every minute of the day and I'm constantly reaching for it when I have five minutes to kill while I wait for my pizza to be ready at the pizza store or while I wait for my tub to fill up or while I'm neglecting to feed my cat to assert my dominance. I've tried lots of retro handhelds. Not nearly as, as much as the big boys like Retro Game Corps or R Retro Dodo or ETA Prime, but I'm, I'm very picky. I only buy the stuff that I think I'm really going to like. And the BU Mini is going to be a very hard hard thing to replace in my life. Nothing has replaced it yet, now, even now, at the end of 2022, which is saying a lot. I'm a big fan of AMD's APUs. You know, CPUs with a built-in graphics processor, those things that let you build gaming PCs without a dedicated GPU. There are lots to choose from these days, but I've always been one to root for the underdog. The skinny nerd on the baseball team, the smallest puppy in the puppy flock, the socially awkward, curly-haired dweeb with thick glasses trying to fit in at social gatherings, and the underdog of APUs is certainly the Athlon 3000G. This thing is not much on paper. It's only a dual-core processor, but with hyper-threading, it runs at 3.5 GHz, but it only pulls 35 watts of power. 
and that's for the CPU and the GPU. Speaking of which, it has built-in Radeon Vega 3 graphics. I mean, with these specs, you're not going to run any modern games at max settings or anything, but you can play a surprising amount of stuff, especially if you overclock it, which I highly suggest. The one thing that makes this APU a great choice is the price. It's 50 bucks. For just 50 freaking bucks, you can get a CPU and a GPU that can play some light games, or even some more demanding games at lower settings. I've done a few videos featuring the 3000G on the channel, and I'm always impressed at the performance that we get considering the price. It's hands down the cheapest way to build a new budget gaming PC. And it's always going to have a special place in my tech hoard, because it's the underdog, like me. In 2022, I made something that I wanted for pretty much my entire life. When I was a little tech dweeb, I always loved going to the arcade. I love arcades. I love the sound of 15 video games being played at once. I love the sticky carpet, the smell of nerds and popcorn. I really miss arcades. It's a shame that arcades are, aren't really a thing anymore. Arcades were such a magical place for young tech dweeb. I always wanted my own arcade machine. And in 2022, I finally got off my lazy butt and built my own wall-mounted arcade cabinet. And it turned out amazing. Better than I could have hoped. I made a video completely showing how I made it and how I set it up. This actually ties into another piece of tech that I got to play with that I loved, the Super Console X. There are several versions of the Super Console X, my favorite of which is the Super Console X Cube, which I also reviewed on the channel. These Android emulation things are hands down the easiest way to get all your uh, old favorite retro games like Burger Time and Spy Hunter and Ninja Turtles and Lee Carvalho's Putting Challenge into your hands and playing on your TV. But it doesn't stop there. With some special hardware and a helpful YouTube video tutorial to follow, hint hint, you could turn a Super Console X into the brain that powers an arcade machine. So my arcade machine has the ability to play not only all the arcade games, not only all the old 8-bit and 16-bit era games, but also some of the 3D consoles like Nintendo 64 and PS1 and Dreamcast. <laughs> games like F-Zero X and Crazy Taxi and Tony Hawk's are almost completely different games when you play them on an arcade machine. And the best part about having an arcade machine is that it'll impress your friends. When your friends come over, they'll all marvel at how cool your arcade machine is and how jealous they are that you have an arcade machine and they don't. I I'm assuming. I don't actually have any friends. The 6500 XT was the first new GPU that came along that was actually in stock and you could buy early this year. It was supposed to be our savior, and it sort of was, in my opinion. I was planning on making one more video about this GPU before the end of the year. I even had the script all written, but I, I ran out of time. <laughs> I still might make that video in the new year, but I'll, I'll give you the gist now. It was going to be called, the 6500 XT is the best value GPU of 2022, and I can prove it. <laughs> Provocative title, right? And I was expecting to get some pushback. For, for some reason, whenever I say good things about the 6500 XT, people get all bothered. I honestly don't understand the hate. I've listened to the arguments, I've tried to see it from all perspectives, and I, I just don't I, I agree why anyone would have a problem with this GPU merely existing. But all that aside, from a value perspective, this GPU is hands down the best performance per dollar GPU that you can buy, even still. Even now that the scalper pandemic has ended, it's still the best value GPU. Better than a 1650, better than an RX 6600, better than anything new that you could buy right now. I even did all the math to prove it. If you calculate the difference in performance compared to the difference in price, it, it's clear. Nothing compares to the value of the 6500 XT. For like 160 bucks, you get a GPU that can play old games at 4K max settings, less old games at 1440p high settings, newish games at 1080p high settings, and brand new AAA games at 1080p medium settings. And like I showed in this video, there's barely any difference between gaming at medium settings versus ultra settings. Uh, yes, this GPU does have some shortcomings. The whole PCIe 4.0 thing, the hardware encoding thing. So if you need that stuff, then yeah, this GPU might not be for you. But even, even with those issues, this GPU still comes out on, on top, in my opinion. And the math proves it. So I'm not going to let the haters win. A wise man said, there are no bad GPUs, just bad prices. And the 6500 XT is not the best GPU, but at the price, it is the best value. Currently, right now. So, good job 6500XT, you win 2022.
And finally, my last piece of favorite tech for 2022 is a new toy that I've been uh, having a ton of fun to uh, play with. The Retroid Pocket 3 and the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Why do I say both of them? Because I don't think of them as different. They're like the same device, really. Same buttons, same shell, same screen, same software. The only difference is the internal components. The RP3 comes in 2GB and 3GB RAM versions with a T310 processor, and the 3 Plus comes with 4GB of RAM and a T618 processor. And the, the price of each is proportional to the performance difference. So, the 3 Plus is just like the highest tier of the Retroid Pocket 3 options. It's not, it's not really a different device. And I'm not going to get into the drama, all that stuff about how evil Retroid is for having the audacity to release a Plus version so soon after the non-Plus. I hate the drama. It's dumb. This thing is great. It's a great device. It's a great toy. And I've been having a ton of fun playing with it. It doesn't replace the BU Mini in my affections because it's not really the same kind of device as that. It's a different thing. It's like a Switch Lite sized toy that has all the flexibility and convenience of Android, but with the ability to play so much retro gaming goodness. You can play all the old stuff, obviously, all your Nintendos and your Segas and your Game Boy and your Babes. You can play all the early 3D stuff like Nintendo 64 and PS1 and Sega Saturn, but you also get access to some of the newer 3D stuff too, like Dreamcast and PS2 and PSP and GameCube. The 3 Plus can handle much more GameCube and PS2 than the Nod Plus, but the Nod Plus can still do some. And even the Nod Plus can play 99% of the PSP library completely problem-free. That's actually my favorite system to emulate on these devices, PSP. It's a portable console that I skipped at the time, and I've had great fun going back and playing lots of the great PSP games that I missed. And the device itself is just freaking awesome. It's a beautiful screen, awesome controls, and it comes in orange, which makes it 10 times better in my eyes. 2022 was a, a big year for me. It, it wasn't just a, about the world somewhat returning to a state of sorta of normalishness, but it's also the year that YouTube really entered my life. I reached a thousand subs early in the year, and now I'm at almost 10,000 subs. <laughs> That's freaking crazy. I got to play with tech for my videos, I got to talk to you guys, I started a Discord and I gathered an awesome group of swell tech weebs over there, and I'm actually starting to make a little bit of money from YouTube, which is a hopeful sign that maybe, someday, I'll be able to do this YouTube thing as a quote-unquote job. But the best part is that I get to make videos. I love making videos. I love thinking about making videos. I love writing dumb jokes. I love testing out tech. I love passing judgment and being the voice of authority and having you hang on by every word like a god amongst the mortals. I love filming videos. I love editing. I love making the thumbnails. I just love every freaking part of what it takes to make fun stuff for you guys to watch. And if I can find a way to do that, like, full-time in 2023, then I'll be a happy dweeb. So that's my goal this year, 2023. Can we make this YouTube thing happen? Well, I don't know. I, I haven't done it yet. So... Uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. And that brings us to the end. <laughs> Not just the end of the video, but the end of 2022. I'd love to hear from you now. What's your favorite tech of 2022? What tech are you excited about for 2023? And on a personal level, I'd love to hear what you did in 2022 and what you're planning for 2023 in, in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you liked the video. Or don't, if you didn't. This video, as all my videos, was brought to you by the patrons of TechTweet and my channel members. If you'd like to support the things that I do, please check out the links in the description below. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. It's been a great year, thanks to you. Well, thanks to me, really, because I make the videos. But you helped by watching the videos, so that's something. Oh god, I gotta end this. I'm TechTweet, thanks for watching. Bye bye